me to lift up those who are weak and may the prayer of my heart always be make me a servant make me a servant make me a servant today father we thank you and we praise you that is our prayer god that we will always be a servant god humble and meek and not leaning to our own understanding but in all of our ways acknowledging you knowing that you will direct our path god give us an ear to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to the church on today thank you god for your faithfulness thank you god for a rhema word god to lift us up to the place where you would have us to be in you we lay all of our cares, cast all of our cares down at your feet, and we take on you or take upon ourselves your peace, your shalom, nothing missing or broken, the peace that surpasses all understanding. And we thank you, O oh God, for the victory is ours in Christ Jesus. And we praise you today, and we exalt your name high. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. I am yours. Tell the Lord, I am yours. And you are mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Isn't he faithful? Amen. The Lord is faithful. We praise God on today. Thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for our pastor, Bishop Smith, Vicar Bishop Smith. Amen. Amen. And our first lady, Toya Daly Smith. Amen. All of the saints of the Most High God, all the elders and ministers and deacons musicians thank god for our officiating minister amen. on today amen thank god for our viewing church amen that's viewing with us via live stream on today we're going to the book of ephesians where we find the theme for the anniversary, which is growing in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read from verses seven, I'll start there, uh, to verse 16. Ephesians chapter 4. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave himself, or he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, 
that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Our focus will be on these next few scriptures. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Therefore, verse 25, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Verse 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Amen. We're ministering today from the subject, speaking up. The church at Ephesus, which was a small town in Greece, bears the title for this letter that Paul wrote. And it was written while Paul was in prison. And in this letter, it is evident that Paul had not become completely acquainted with the members of this church. For in Ephesians 1 and 15, he says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. So he's not familiar with the members of this church, but what impressed him was their faith. And they are Gentiles, but Paul is writing to them to remind them of who they are in Christ Jesus. And he reminds them that and he says, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, Amen. being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And he tells them, therefore, remember that you once, once, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So we see that his purpose for writing uh, to the church was to remind them of who they are in Christ Jesus. Amen. He didn't spend a lot of time saying what you were and what idols you worship. His main purpose for writing to them was to assure them that there had been a change Amen. since they had received Christ and to tell them who they are in Christ Jesus. He not only uh, encourages them, but he uh, with this written letter, but he he lets them know that I'm praying for you. Not only am I writing this letter and it's been a done deal out of my hands and out of my mind, but I'm praying for you. He said, I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. I'm praying that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? I don't, I don't want you to feel isolated. I don't want you to feel like you're out there by yourself. You are part of a body and you have a great inheritance. And I'm praying that God would open your eyes. And what is the exceeding greatness of 
his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You have a place in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 He prayed again and he said, I'm praying that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend, here it is again, with all the saints. You're not by yourself. With all the saints, what is the length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. So he builds them up and he reminds them of who they are in Christ Jesus. And in telling them that in verse one of Ephesians four, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Amen. beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. There is a holy calling. There is a, a, a heavenly calling. And you are to work, walk worthy of that calling. With all lowliness, he says, and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, and endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And he uses the analogy of the body. He says there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Amen. And father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So what better example for him to use than a body? A unified agency, if you will, with a brain, a head, and intellect sending messages throughout the body. But he tells the Ephesians that Jesus Christ is the head. But we are the body. And God has given some gifts to the body. That the body is a unique agency. It has within itself everything needed for edification. If something is going wrong in your body, your body knows it before your mind even knows it. And your body begins to work to bring correction to the area that is in need of help. So he uses the example of the body. And he said that God gave some gifts to the body. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. But the beautiful thing is that when we like to isolate ourselves and say, I don't have that gift, I don't have that gift, I don't have that gift, I don't have that gift. Verse 7 says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So everybody sitting here that's in the body of Christ has a gift, and you are equipped to edify the body uh, for the equipping of the saints verse 12 for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ and that word equip there means to put in order it's it's a word that means setting a broken limb or for putting a joint back into its place the basic idea of the word is that of putting a thing into the condition in which it ought to be. Amen. Amen. So the equipping of the saints is what God has given the church, the gifts, so that things can operate the way that it ought to operate. Amen. Amen. Because if anything is out of joint in the body, that's the one thing about the body. The whole body feels it. Amen. You can have a corn on your toe and it'll shut you down. Amen. Amen. You can stump your finger or your toe and your body will feel the pain and shut down operation. So Paul 
Paul is letting the church know that we are one body. Get rid of this fragmented thinking that you are not uh, uh, important uh, or that you what you do does not affect the body. He said we are all one body. Amen. And we all have a purpose. And in that purpose, we are to edify. We are to build up. We will look very strange if our hands started fighting against our face. Amen. But yet in the body of Christ, amen, we're finding things. There's a lack of understanding. And that's why Paul said, I'm praying for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I'm praying that you will know who you are in Christ Jesus and why you have been placed in the body of Christ. There is a purpose uh, of being in Christ. God has a purpose. He has a divine will. And that is that we come to the unity of the faith. Uh, we're not there yet. No, not yet. Uh, too many beliefs, too many different doctrines. Amen. Causing us to fight against one another. So we're still growing. Yeah. Amen. And of the knowledge of the son to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the gifts are given to unify us and to put us back in place if we get out of joint. But then he says, that we should no longer be children, verse 14, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Amen. He said, if we do what God has commanded us to do and use the gifts appropriately, there will be unity and stability in the body. We won't be so easily taken, if you will. We won't, won't be so easily persuaded or to go off in the spirit of error. Right. But in verse 15, he says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Our message today is speaking up. The only way that we can speak up or speak the truth is in love. Y'all just bear with me a minute. Up is the only language of the body of Christ. So we ought to be speaking up. See, a lot of times when we say we are speaking up, we're actually speaking down. Speaking up causes us to grow up. Up is toward the sky or a higher position. In the body of Christ, we are growing up into the head, which is Christ. So if I am speaking up to you, that means that where you are is not up. Say amen. amen. We get fixated on where people are. And we speak to where they are, but not who they are. Did y'all hear that? I just spent that time going through the Ephesians, the first parts, because Paul was speaking up to them. We like to speak to where people are, not who they are. So when we are speaking up, we must be mindful that if you don't know where up is, don't say anything. Oh, pray, pray, pray. 
There is language in the body. And Paul says that if we speak the truth in love, we will grow. Hmm. If we sincerely speak the truth in love, it causes growth. It causes development. It causes maturity. It causes us to change. It causes us to grow up. When Jesus spoke to Peter, he said, Peter, Satan have desired to sift you as wheat. He didn't badger Peter and tell Peter, I know you're going to betray me. He did tell him that. But he didn't leave him there. He spoke to where he was going and not where he was. Amen. He said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. We all have areas in our lives where we get stuck. But the problem with the church is we are preoccupied with being stuck. We are preoccupied with sin. Amen. And when we are preoccupied with sin, there's no way that we can see the victory of who we are in Christ Jesus. Because we are preoccupied with where a person is, we are clueless to where they are going. See, if I judge you based on where you are right now, I can't speak up to you. Speaking up is not coming and telling somebody they're wrong unless you have a word to tell them who they are. Bear with me. If I come to tell you to stop lying, then I must speak some truth to you. I must be able to tell you that Jesus is the spirit of truth. And because you are in him, you are not a liar. But the old man is manifesting himself. And in order for you to come up to the truth, I must point you to the truth. That's okay. Because Psalms, I believe it's 50, says that we like being fixed on where people are. We like to talk about people. Don't say amen. And in some kind of way, Somebody being down makes you feel comfortable. Because if you're down, we're going to be down together. But if you go up, the light going to shine, then I'm down and I need to come up. But we have been equipped to speak truth, the truth. You know... We think we know the truth sometimes. But if you're judging a situation from your own eyes and your vantage point, you don't know the truth. Because many times when we call ourselves speaking up or speaking the truth to someone, there is bias in what we're saying. Oh, that's all right. Thank you, Jesus. There's some bias. There is something that we may not like about them. So we see the opportunity. I, you know, God is dealing with me. No, he's not. God's not dealing with you. But in order for us to speak the truth, 
It has to come from God because he is the spirit of truth. And it has to be in love. We have to sincerely want to see each other grow. Amen? We have to sincerely want to see each other grow. So the only language in the body of Christ that we need to be speaking is up. Come on and give God praise. Because if we understand that we are a part of a body, one body, then if you grow, that benefits me. Amen? Amen. But if you are not growing, that's a hindrance to me. Look at this, verse 16. He says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what? By what? Every, come on, say it with me. Every joint supplies. What does your Bible say? Does it say supplies? Every joint supplies according to the effective working by which what? Come on. Every part. Say it again. What? Every part does its share, increase. For what? For the edifying of itself in love. If every part does its share, then there will not be an imbalance. Now watch this. If every part does not do its share, something is being strained. If every part is not doing its share, something is going to be strained. There is tension in the body somewhere. There are muscle spasms taking place in the body somewhere. There's too much weight on one area of the body, which means that something is going to break and put the whole body out of commission. Every part doing its share causes growth. There's a, what do you call it, a 2080 rule where 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And if 20% of the people do 80% of the work, that is not effective. See, Paul said there has to be an effective working. So if 20% of the people are doing 80% of the church, we are working against ourselves. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. We are working against ourselves. When we say, I don't have gifts, or I'm not important. God. That means, Lord have mercy. Somebody that is not gifted in that area is going to operate in that area. My God, have mercy. I need to drink some water. Amen. Amen. That means... There's somebody that is not gifted in that area will operate in that area and torment the body. Y'all hearing me? And what do we as the body do? We don't speak up. Raquel, we start looking at each other like horrible. Why are they doing that? Why Bishop got them doing that? I need to sit down. (laughs) 
We get in our corners. I don't know why Bishop won't speak up. But you are not operating in your gifting. And if you don't operate in your gifting, then there is an area of lack in the body. Which means if there's an area of lack in the body, then I am not getting all that I need to get from that ministry. But this is how we do it. Sister Dana, this is how we speaking up. Uh, sister, brother, God has not called you to do that. <laughs> is that speaking up? Now, I think we talked about this one time in Bible enrichment. And that's where Paul says, I want you to jump down to verse 29. He says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good somebody say necessary, necessary. Edification, edification that it may impart grace to the hearers there is a necessary edification and it is not corrupt the word corrupt means rotten, petrified, corrupted by one, and no longer fit for use. Worn out of poor quality, bad, unfit for use, worthless. So there we are speaking to our brother and sister Words that are of no profit, but yet we say we're speaking up. The word is worthless. It's useless. It is not building that individual up. See, our, our problem is we don't know we need each other. We don't know we need each other. We're so busy trying to figure out if we like somebody. Let me tell you something. If I'm drowning, I don't care if you like me or not. See, we get stuck. See, this is us stuck. We can't grow. Because we're looking at people trying to figure out if we like them or not. Oh, I don't like him. I don't like her. I can't wait. Sister Paris, this part of the service is over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me check my texts. What's going on in the news? We dressed it. May, what's her name? Megan Ware. <laughs> but would you cut off your finger? Would you cut off your thumb? Would you cut off your ear? But this is what we do because we don't understand that we are one, that we are a body. And if I don't know how to speak up to you, 
to tell you that you are the called of God according to his purpose, that you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. My brother, my sister, you know what? I know where you are, but let me tell you who you are. You are created in Christ Jesus. You are his workmanship, and God is calling you higher. God didn't call you to fornication. He called you to live for him. He called you to be his servant. And you got power over the devil. No, no. You ain't supposed to be in no un, uh, equally yoked fornicating relationship. Don't you know you going to hell? Corrupt. Worthless. Did not impart one ounce of power or empowerment. Did not refocus me to up. Did not refocus my attention on Christ. Did not refocus me to who I am in him. What you did was you injured me. Come on and give God praise. And there go my foot walking out the door. I got a limp now because I injured a useful part of the body that just got stuck and didn't know who they were in Christ. Somebody say, speak up. So if the word that I'm speaking will not edify, then I need to be praying. Is that all right? Because if God is dealing with you to speak up, then I need to be in prayer. To make sure that I'm hearing from God. And I got some scripture that I can point you to. So that you can go up. Because up is higher. Up is in Christ. And that's where the body of Christ is growing. It's growing up into Christ Jesus. Which is the head. I am in him. But I still need to grow. Say amen. He says, we are to be speaking what is good for necessary edification. Everything that we want to say is not necessary. And everything that you want to say is not time for it. There's something that you'll learn is that there's a time to speak and there's a time to be quiet. But let me tell you, give you a hint. There's only one point to the message and that's speaking up. (laughs) If it is burning in you, it's not God. Did that help somebody? (laughs) If it is burning you that you just got to get to this person and tell them, it is not God. That's you. Say amen. Amen. That's you. Because God is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. What is love? Love is patient and love is kind. And the body is growing based on love. The body doesn't grow any other way. The only soil or the only nutrients that the body grows on is love. Otherwise, it's poison. 
it's corrupt communication. Speaking up imparts grace. It ministers. It gives a gift. If I'm speaking up to you and I want to give you a gift, by the time you leave and we leave that conversation, you should be empowered. You should be lifted. Love is like a crowbar. Anybody ever get a flat tire and you get stuck? Everybody in life gets stuck somewhere. We all get stuck. I don't need you coming to me saying, you stuck. Brother, if I pull over on the side of the road and I get out of my car, do you want me to say, oh, man, you got a flat? <laughs> and get back in the car and drive off. <laughs> what help was I? All I did was point out the obvious. If I got a problem and I'm struggling, guess who knows that? I know that. And I know you will want to be prophet, so here we go. Okay. The Lord said, it's going to be all right. But you're wrong. And you know you're wrong. What? What was that? You didn't prophesy to me. You told me something I already know. You didn't edify me. You did not build me up. You did not want to make me go up. You make me want to go and hide somewhere and crawl up under a blanket or feel hopeless and feel like my life won't change and it can't get better. That's a corrupt word. That's an idle word. That's not a word that will equip me with life. That's not a word that's going to strengthen me. That's not a word that's going to make me lift my head up. That's not a word that's going to make me pray. That's not a word that's going to make me turn around and go up. We need each other. We are equipped to speak the language of up. In love, the truth. There's a gentleman that said that he has a book of prophecy on all of his friends. That every time they get a word and they share it with him or he knows about it, He writes it down. And when they're going through a situation in their life, when they are stuck, he says, whoa, whoa, let me get my book. On this day, this day, God said this, thus, so, that's thus, so, 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 so. No, you can't go back. You got to go up because God said this. That's speaking up. That's too much work for some people, I guess. I don't know. But when we are concerned, genuinely concerned about one another, and we know that there is a calling on your life, there's a calling on your life, and I see you getting snared, and I was in the service when the man of God or the woman of God prophesied and said, God is about to use you. God is about to change your life. God is about to this, and then the cycle appears again, and we watch them get caught up in the cycle. And what do we talk about? The cycle. We don't talk about the prophecy. We talk about the trick of the enemy. Oh, the the, the enemy done showed up, and they got tricked and got caught in that snare again. Look at them. Well, where's the prophecy? Where's the word? That now we have become partakers because we were in the service. We heard the word of God. We are witnesses. We are witnesses to what God said. And we are to, in that time, speak up. 
and say, no, that's, that's not what the Lord said. I know that's the trick of the enemy. But we're going to pray and we're going to call on the name of the Lord. Because God said thus and so. God said thus and so. God said this concerning your life. Oh, that's a good word right there. Mm-hmm. 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 That's how the body grows. Did y'all hear that? That's how the body grows. The body doesn't grow with me pointing out every mistake you make. The bot, your children don't even like that. Your children don't grow like that. They grow more corrupt. They start thinking I'm not good at anything. They start thinking I can't be successful. I'm always making a mistake. I'm always messing up because I haven't shown them up or you haven't shown them up. How many of you want to be shown up? Oh, God. He says it should minister grace. It should minister power. It's time for us to speak the language of up. But guess what? As I'm closing, you can't speak up to someone else if you don't speak up to yourself. Thank you. Keep playing, Brother Jeff. I got to learn how to speak up to me, Sister Jaquetta, because I put myself down all the time. So much, many times to the point that if somebody is speaking up to me, I can't receive it. If the only language I know is down, down on myself, I can't speak up to you. I can't speak up to anybody else because I can't speak up to me. That's a foreign language. God wants us to speak up. We got to be able to encourage ourselves. So I want us to stand today. You know where you are. But God said the way is up. And if you're going to grow you got to be looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of your faith. He has begun a good work in you. And I want to speak up to you right now. Where you are is not who you are. That means you got to come out of depression. You got to come out of fear. Because that's not who you are. You're not a hater. You know what I mean about that? Just hate everybody in the church. Just ain't nobody living right. That's, that's the language that you speak. They all hypocrites. They all phony. 
That's right, everybody, including you, because you're in the congregation. See how we fragment ourselves? We don't see ourselves as the body. We see us and them. We're not going to grow up like that. Let's come together. Let's speak life. Let's speak the truth in love. Necessary edification. If it is burning in your spirit, in your mouth, is it God? Who is it? Mm -hmm. So speak up to yourself right now. Everything that you have said to yourself that is not true, I want you to speak the truth right now to yourself. Come on. Come on. Come on, speak to yourself. Speak up to yourself. Because I need you. God needs you. Come on, speak up. Speak up. Hallelujah. Speak up. Look up. Speak up. I am the called of God according to his purpose. Come on, speak up. Speak up. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me. What I'm going through right now, he died to save me from. Come on. The only way for me is up. It's not getting worse. It's getting better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not worthless. I have value. I have great value. I have purpose. Amen. God is using me. God desires to use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My circumstance says alcoholic, but God says free. Hallelujah. My circumstance says drug addict, but God says clean and delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I must move from addiction to clean and delivered. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise today. Thank you, Lord. Have you heard? Oh, come on and bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let me speak a, a word of up to the gossiper. You really have the gift of edification. Because you like to talk. You really have the capacity to build up. But the enemy is using the gift in a perverted way. But I speak to you today that God is going to use you in a mighty way. I speak to you today that you are a prayer warrior. I speak to you today that life is in your tongue. I speak to you today that your appetite is not for what's going on in somebody's life. But that your appetite is if you know it means that you must pray and intercede until deliverance comes. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the one that's struggling with fear, you really have the gift of faith.
The enemy wants you to believe only negative. He wants you to believe only the things that you see. And you have such a strong uh, passion and fear that it is, it is crippling you. But with that same energy and that same strong belief to believe a lie, God said you will now believe the truth. And because of that, you will change. Your life will change. Your circumstances will change. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. That's up. Come on and praise God for up. Hallelujah. To the one struggling, the gospel is preached to those that are in poverty. To tell them that there is a way forward. And God wishes above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen? Amen. So up is not the poverty. So stop looking down on yourself from where you are and look up. That means there's more. Somebody say more. Come on and give God praise. That means there's opportunity for growth. I'm turning it over to Bishop. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Give God praise. Amen. To those of you that are streaming live with us, we thank the Lord for you. We know that you've heard a word that was life-changing, that was liberating. But do Pastor Smith a favor. Number one, if you don't have a good church home, find a good church home. Sit under good preaching and good teaching. Apply it to your life and watch you begin to experience the promised abundant life. That's number one. Number two, if this message has been a blessing to you, go to our website, www.nbhop.org. Make a charitable donation. We ask that you do that because it's because of people like you that continue to sow into the lives of people like me that enable us to remain on the air and do the things that we do. As we close out on today, help me on congregation. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. God bless you. So those